Good afternoon. I want to uh, deal with a very, very important person that has come into the church in these last days and his cronies and his heresies. Uh, I want to expose Mr. Stephen Furtick because I feel it's very, very important that it is a requirement of those who believe the Word of God that they expose false teaching and false doctrine. The very first thing that I want to say People get mad with me when I name the names of heretics. Well, I want to show you from the Word of God what the Bible actually says. Concerning heresy and false doctrine, everything we say must be confirmed by the Word of God. People get tired of apologetic ministries and discernment ministries. But it's a part of the Word of God. It is a part of the Gospel which is laid down by the prophets, the Old Testament prophets and the New Testament prophets and apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is imperative that we name the names of heretics and false teachers, and there's a reason why. I just want to quickly go over here to uh, 2 Peter chapter 2. It says, But there were false prophets among the people, also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies. There's the word. The Greek word is heresis. They will bring in damnable heresies even denying the Lord that bought them. They will deny the Lord that bought them. And they will bring upon themselves swift destruction. We'll just continue here. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. This is Ezekiel 33, where the false teachers are even sharing the wool off the backs to get money. We've had a whole bunch of those preachers in the past. People like Kenneth Copeland, Kenneth Hagen, they are sharing people from the very wool of their backs, sharing people with, with their money gospel. Because the gospel for them is about money. They are covetous and they are liars. And by the way, the Bible says we are not to be covetous because covetousness is actually idolatry. In Ephesians 5, 2, it tells me that. And through covetousness with, with, with feigned words make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not. In other words, these false teachers are actually going to hell. They are going to eternal hell. And this is the reason why we preach against false teaching and false doctrine. I thank God for the discernment ministries like Chris Rosenbro, Jacob Presh, J Justin Peters. I thank God for Servitus Christi. I thank God because we need these people in the church to warn the church about heresy and false doctrine. False doctrine, may I make this point, is nothing to toy with. But I want you to notice over here that the false teachers, as they were false teachers amongst the children of Israel, right throughout their sojourning, right throughout to the time of Malachi, false teachers preach and bring in damnable heresies. The old Puritan divine, divine Thomas Watson, said the following, you can go to hell for preaching false doctrine as much as you can go to hell for homosexuality or adultery. There I said it. There is hellfire in false doctrine. That is why there is continuous warnings in the new, to the New Testament church throughout the epistles concerning the false teachers. And it is our responsibility as born-again Christians and as people that have hold to the truths of God's word, the fundamental truths of God's word, that we expose these heretics and these false teachers. Turn with me now to the book of First, Second Timothy chapter 3. The book of Second Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Now we need to understand the backdrop of 2 Timothy chapter 3. We'll just read it very, very quickly, the verse that I want to get to. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Now get it in your head right now that this is talking about the peril for the Christian and the child of God. These epistles were never written to the world. They were never written to sinners. Oh, it does include them in certain places because there's going to be peril in the world. We are seeing peril in the world at the moment. The last two years have shown us there is peril in the world.
But perilous times, some translations say dangerous times, dangerous times shall come, perilous times. It has the idea of a very rough sea and you are on the ship and there's peril. It's the danger and peril and you must try chart your course on the sea to safety. Perilous times. It's going to be perilous for the world, but it's most of all going to be peril for the church. That is why we have the encouragement in the word of God in Ephesians 6, 6 uh, 12, if I'm not mistaken. No, I think it's Ephesians 6, 11, which states, no, it's 6, 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You see, we need to know the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to know his word in these days because that will be our tool for charting our course in the perilous times that we are faced. And none of us are going to miss those perilous times. The Bible tells us this. Perilous times shall come. Now, another thing I need to say that Paul in three places is giving in, in three places and this one included is giving a commentary of the Holy Spirit upon Matthew 24 Mark 13 and also Luke 21 which is known as the Oliver Discourse although the Holy Spirit expands what Jesus is teaching on the last day is the Spirit of God expands it through what Paul is saying here in his epistles he literally uh, uh, does it in 1st Timothy chapter 4 which is also another Holy Spirit exposition upon on Matthew 24, Luke 21, and Mark 13, and the same in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. It is a, it is a commentary or uh, the Holy Spirit's exposition upon what Jesus said in the Olive Discourse. We have to keep that in mind when we study out this particular verse of Scripture. It is a perilous time that we are living in. We are living in the time of peril. We need to know the Word of God in order to get us through these particular things that we are seeing. And because we don't know the Word of God, as I've said so many times, we are in very, very bad spiritual shape. Because this is our charter. This is our book that we read. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalm 119 says. Now let us just go and read over here. Let's go back to First Timothy, 2 Timothy 3, please. 2 Timothy chapter 3. For this know also that the last, in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Self-idolatry and narcissism. They will be a narcissistic, self-idolizing and self-worshipping generation where everything is going to be about me, 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 me. And it faces the church. And the church has to keep to the bulwark of faith and put the plumb down of God's word against this narcissistic spirit that has invaded the earth. The book of Romans 1 talks of it as worshipping and serving the creature who is more blessed than the creator. Worshipping self. What is pornography? What is all sex? But a manifestation of self-worship and self-love. Narcissism. Narcissistic people. Go out with some of your friends. Go out for tea with them or coffee, or have a meal with them in a restaurant, you will see how self-centered and how self-idolatrous people are. Self-idolatry, the worship of self. And this creates a problem because the church has to face it, and the church has to deal with this particular thing. And unfortunately, most of the church hasn't dealt with it correctly, because we have narcissistic preachers coming into the body of Christ. Now, let me explain something to you. How is a man to deal with, with teaching and preaching. How is a preacher supposed to preach? Now you've got three main ways of interpreting the Bible. Two of them are wrong and one of them is right. Let me give you the three main ways. Number one is exegesis. Exegesis. That is taking something out of the word of God and feeding the flock with it. In other words, causing them to grow. Feed the church whom God hath purchased in his own blood, he tells them in Acts 20, 28. 
Taking the word of God and feeding the church with the word of God. Exegesis. We understand it by the word exposition, where we exposit the scriptures. I think of a great man of God by the name of Martin Lloyd-Jones. Martin Lloyd-Jones was one of the finest Bible expository preachers of the last century. What he would do is he would go to the book of Romans. He would take about 10 years just to preach on the book of Romans, maybe less, or even over a year, on the book of Romans, looking at it verse by verse. He would take the first part of Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, that's actually Ephesians, but Romans 1, Paul, an apostle, a called apostle, uh, separated unto the gospel of God, and he would look at each term that the Holy Spirit uses. Now, some people don't like that kind of thing. Some Christians do not like hearing expository preaching because they are lazy minds. They want to be entertained. They want the wow factor. And there's some preachers that do that, and they do a brilliant job and bring the gospel excellent. But in order to understand the scriptures, there has to be biblical exposition, taking something out of the word of God and feeding the church with the word in order that they might grow. Feed, Acts 20, 28 says, the church whom God has purchased in his very own blood. Now, the second way and this is the wrong way of interpreting scripture, and every single preacher has done it. And this is I see Jesus. What is I see Jesus? It is reading something to, into the text that is not there. And I believe every single born again preacher that loves the Lord, including the heretics out there like Kenneth Copeland and Kenneth Hagen, and all the bunch, Bill Johnson included, because there's a whole bunch of uh, false teachers, and we must remember something false Christs and false teachers are manifesting themselves, and they come out of the woodwork in the last days. They just breed like bunnies. I mean, they just got breeding skills like you can't believe. For, for every good church, if there are good churches around anymore, there's a million bad ones. But in any case, these guys breed like bunnies. They, 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 they just multiply like flies. Flies, they, they, they're like rats. They just multiply. Pontic vermin. These guys multiply in the last days. It's Satan's multiplication. False teachers are around. Now, Many of them eisegete the scriptures, read something into the text that is not there. The Word of Faith teachers do that. People like Kenneth Copeland, Kenneth Hagen, Fred Price, Charles Capps, you name it. The whole host of people at the Trinity Broadcasting Network. These liars, they eisegete. But now we get to a third one. This is a modern one. It's called Nasegete. Nasegeting the Word of God. Nosegeting the word of God. What do I mean? This is the worst of the lot. Kenneth Copeland does it to a certain degree as well. All these false teachers do it to a certain degree. But there's been none that has actually done it to the degree that a man like Stephen Furtick has. The very first thing I want to say is that Stephen Furtick has the ego, the size of Canada, the size of the USA, the size of North and South America combined. He has not even Montana can eclipse and is big enough to hold this man's ego. He is one of the most egotistical preachers out there. With all his cronies, such as Levi Lasco, and people like Carl Lentz, they were all connected. Carl Lentz was recently exposed for adultery. And he's no longer pastor, so to speak, of Hillsongs, the Hillbilly Church there in New York City. These are false teachers, by the way. These guys have major, major egos. And what they do, Beth Moore does it as well. So does the guys at the Passion Conference, which John Piper is literally uh, playing around with. Uh, these guys have egos the size of I don't know what. Because what they do is they impose and read themselves into the text. In other words, they will read about a Bible character like David and Goliath. And they will say, okay, I am David. And they will literally make themselves live the narrative and they will preach from that experience of what they do. It is very, very subtle spiritual seduction. It is heresy. Because that is not how you deal with the Bible. I wish they would maybe, if they were really honest with themselves, try and be the man with all the sixes. Because Goliath is a type of the Antichrist. And it's about the Bethlehemite coming to destroy him. It's, it's really a typology of how the Lord Jesus Christ in the last day actually destroys the Antichrist that should come, whom the Lord shall consume with the fire of his mouth and the brightness of his coming. Chop his head off, so to speak. It's a type and shadow. Here's the Bethlehemite coming to deal with a man with all the sixes. It's a type and shadow of Jesus. Well, these morons don't know it's a type and shadow of the Lord Jesus Christ. David is a messianic type of Christ. 
They don't know this because they don't know the word of God. And here you have these guys preaching and teaching the biggest bunch of hoopa. Stephen Furtick, when he preaches concerning David, will impose himself into it and live the narrative and become part of the narrative. This is nothing more than self-idolatry. This is nothing more. This is nothing more than Satan busy imposing a vain man upon the scriptures with his satanic anointing upon it. That's what it is. And there I said it. Stephen Furtick is imposing the meaning on the text that is not there. He is not teaching the Bible. He doesn't know the word of God. He doesn't know the scriptures. For instance, when he was preaching about Joseph, Joseph, there in the book of Genesis, I think it's in the 11th chapter, and it says Joseph had a dream. And he will take that term, Joseph had a dream. And he'll preach about the dreams that he has had. About him fulfilling his destiny. And he always wanted to be a rock star. And he talks of how when he was at a rock concert when he was about 15, they asked him to come and play something at a rock concert. And everybody was talking about him afterwards on the radio, and this young guy who's unknown. Until he was called, closer, quote unquote, to ministry. This guy preaches the biggest load of hoopla. He puts himself into the text about his dreams, his visions, his goals, his great ministry, who he is as a person. This is vain talkers. This is vanity par excellence. It's reading yourself into the text, which is not good. Mr. T.D. Jakes is one of Stephen Furtick's friends. T.D. Jakes is very popular amongst charismatics. T.D. Jakes is a oneness Pentecostal. <coughs> He's a oneness Pentecostal. He preaches the doctrine of Jesus only. Now, you stupid charismatics who have a problem with me naming the names of T.D. Jakes, let me give you the correct biblical understanding. A born-again Christian is a Trinitarian. Our gospel is Trinitarian. Anything that denies the Trinity of God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, is of the spirit of Antichrist. Turn with me to the book of 1 John chapter 2, please. The book of 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. In verses 22, who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ, that's the Messiah, that he came exclusively to die for mankind's sins. This is Roman Catholicism essentially. It's talking about the Roman Catholic Church, that the Roman Catholic Church is denying that Jesus is the exclusive Messiah. They have their Pope and they have their priests in the place of Christ, and therefore they are Antichrist. Wherever you see the Antichrist, it is a type and shadow of something. It's showing us that something is in the place of Christ. It's set up as a religious organization in the place of Christ. These are imposters. Who is a liar but he that denieth that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Christ. He is an antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son relationship is a term that the Holy Spirit uses continuously throughout the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, starting in the very first verses. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. The oneness between the Father and Son relationship, which literally is at its foundation. When God gave the Shema to, Ro to, to Moses, or, or should we rather say, the Creed of Israel, which is Hero Israel in Deuteronomy 6 4, Hero Israel, the Lord our God is oneness. One in three, three in one. It corresponds to Genesis chapter 1, verses 26, where it says, Let us make man in our image and our likeness. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The oneness between the three persons of the Godhead, one in unity, one in purpose, one fulfilling the divine plan of redemption. 
That is the understanding of scriptures. Well, uh, these heretics out there, such as the oneness Pentecostals, the modalists, people like T.D. Jakes and Mr. Stephen Thurdick, they deny the oneness between the father and son relationship that they teach of Jesus only. And they say that he emanates as one time as God the Father, he one time emanates as God the Son, and one time he emanates as God the Holy Spirit. This is an attack on the Trinity. It is Gnosticism that they teach. This is pure and utter Gnosticism, the very Gnostic heresies that John in his epistle is writing against. He is writing against T.D. Jakes. He is writing against Kimmy Girl Davis. He is writing against Stephen Furtick. They deny the Father and the Son relationship. They are, in fact, of the spirit of Antichrist. Add to that, you put your ideas, and you preach about yourself into the text. You are an anti-Christian. This is inspired. These doctrines that these guys are teaching are of the spirit of Antichrist. There, I said it. They're of the spirit of Antichrist. They're putting themselves in the place of Christ, exalting themselves through the Bible. How can you possibly do that to the Word of God? Because the Word of God has nothing to do with you. It is God's testimony to man. It is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit's divine record of their supernatural activity among men. It has got nothing to do with Mr. Stephen Furtick. These guys are in error. These guys are teaching heresy. They are putting themselves into the text. That's all they ever do. And a feel-good message of making you feel good about yourselves. They are liars and they have lying spirits according to the word of God. They are teaching error. They're teaching error. They are heretical. Oh, but he's such a nice man. Well, Jim Jones was a nice man, and he led thousands of people to their deaths in Guyana. Damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them. Ask these guys any basic question concerning soterology, or dispensationalism, or charis the charismata, or basic Bible doctrine, they cannot answer you the questions because they are not ed educated. The percentage of charismatic preachers today even Trinitarian ones, are not on the basis of Scripture supposed to be in the pulpit. They are preaching lies in hypocrisy. They are preaching something else. They are preaching another gospel. Now, let me give this very, very clearly to you in the book of Galatians. Turn with me to the book of Galatians, chapter 1. Galatians, chapter 1. Verses 6, and he repeats it twice in verses 6 and 9. I marvel that you are so soon to be removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ into another gospel, which is another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. He's talking about the Judaizers in context, but it applies to all false teachers. They would pervert the gospel of Christ, change it into a gospel about me and my needs and my desires and my wants and how sad my life is and I need a quick spiritual pep-me-up. If you are coming to the Lord Jesus Christ to give you a spiritual pep-me-up, if you're coming to this channel to hear something about the Word of God and you just want to be made feel better about yourself, please look somewhere else, because this is not what we're going to do. This is not a gospel of a spiritual pick-me-up to make you feel better because you stubbed your toe today. No, this gospel is God's gospel, and we uphold the gospel of God. We uphold the gospel of the Son of God. We uphold the gospel of the Holy Spirit, the mighty three-in-one. We are Trinitarians by definition, and we worship God the Father as, as God. God the Son is God, and God the Holy Spirit is God. Three distinct persons, divine, holy, righteous. That's what we worship. That's that's our God, not the God of these people, because they're teaching another God. And then he says over there, But though we or an angel from heaven preach unto you any other gospel, in which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Let him be accursed. This is the, the apostolic benediction to all false teaching, all Judaization, all heresy. The Holy Spirit literally used the Apostle Paul to put a curse on these false teachers. He said, let them be accursed, anathema, damnable heresies, even denying the Lord. These false teachers are accursed because they are preaching another gospel, which is not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let him be accursed. Let me just say, I agree with the curse of God upon these false teachers. They are all accursed of God. 
The curse of God is upon Kenneth Copeland. The curse of God is upon Stephen Furtick. The curse of God is upon Beth Moore. The curse of God is upon the social gospel. The curse of God is upon all this other nonsense. Bill Johnson, all these heretics. The curse of God. They are not preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. They are preaching another gospel. The curse of God is upon them. Let him be accursed. And if I preach another gospel, if I go away from the truth of God's word, I, essentially, according to the word of God, am preaching another gospel. I am accursed. Because false teaching is nothing more than demonic. False teaching is demonic. It has its source in demons. It's doctrines of demons. Turn with me to First Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4. Now the Holy Spirit speaketh expressively. The Dewey translation says manifestly. That in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. The faith that was once and for all delivered to the saints. Christians that have held the truths of God's word and Christians that uphold the truths of the Bible. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. What he's literally saying here, in the last days, what's coming to rise up in the church is going to be false doctrine and seducing spirits, people that are going to peddle in spiritual seduction. I was reading Todd Bentley's Facebook page. This guy is at it again. He's at it again. He's at it again with his heresy. He's at it again, busy leading people in heaven trips and saying, how can you go and experience God? It's pure and utter occultism that Todd Bentley is busy doing. He has a lying spirit. He is an occultic spirit. He is a warlock. He's leading people into heaven-sent journeys and all this kind of stuff. But the man doesn't want to repent. He's living in sin according to the word of God. He, he has committed adultery against his wife and he has married somebody else. He is an adulterer and the Holy Spirit is moving. He's talking about all these great things that are going to happen to him. And the great ministry that he has, everything about, oh, the revival, the revival. The man, according to the Bible, is deceived. He is a seducer. He does not know the word of God. He does not know scripture, nor does John Crowder, nor does Bill Johnson, nor does those heretics out there know the word of God or the teaching of the scriptures. These guys are heretical. They're teaching doctrines of demons. Paul is saying that in our pulpits, they're going to rise in the last days, people that are preaching false doctrine, and there will be doctrines of demons. Doctrines of demons seducing spirits. Look how far the church has gone from the ancient path. We have occultic stuff coming into the house of God today. Bill Johnson, his group go down to the graves of dead people. Supposedly dead saints, men of God like Smith Wigglesworth and others. And they suck up anointings from the grave. The Bible calls this spiritism, spiritualism, necromancy. Communication with the dead. Suck up the anointing that was apparently on these dead bodies and bring it to, I don't want that stuff. This is the spirit of death. This is from the devil. The Bible forbids this practice in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 9. In fact, one of the followers of John Crowder told me in a Facebook message that there's a link between the spirit of the man and the body. And you can suck up anointings right from heaven. This stuff is demonic and disgusting. It is an abomination to the Lord. Deuteronomy 18, 11 to 13. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do the, the, the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone. These guys are going against the word of God. Astral traveling. Astral traveling. These guys go to heaven and will. It's astral traveling. It's got a new name. The occult has been regarnished by these modern day Christians as being something that is biblical. No, it's not. It's occultism. That which is occult then in the Old Testament and now will be the occult then. These people are practicing witchcraft. They are practicing warlocks. The stuff of Heidi Becker, all the stuff that is coming into the church in this last day is demonic. It is demonic infestation. It is the preparing of the harlot church for the coming of the Antichrist. People like Pat King. And she has weird prophecies on God TV where she talks of this one that is coming. It sounds exactly like Alice Bailey. It sounds exactly like Madame Blavatsky. These guys are teaching false doctrine. And worst of all, they're bringing spiritual seduction into the house of God. 
And you can go to the videos of Andrew Strom, who has done excellent work at exposing this stuff about the Kundalini spirit, the New Age spirit, in the house of God. We've got churches today that have Wednesday nights devoted to yoga. What is yoga? It's an Eastern practice. Do you know the Old Testament in the book of the prophet Isaiah talks of the East coming into the church? The soothsayers and the spirit of soothsayery and the spirit of augurism and the spirit of all this kind of stuff, divination and yoga coming into the house of God. Yoga! Where you hook and link yourself to spirits, opening yourself up to, to open the third eye and yoke yourself to a spirit over there, getting the kundalini spirit, the serpent that is coiled around the spine. All this demonic philosophy. they got yoga in the house of God. Doctrines of devils. The church is not to sit with the stuff. If you are sitting in the church and they're busy practicing yoga or some form of occultism, the Bible says very, very clearly, it says the sacrifice of the pagan are offered to devils, not to God. And I don't want you to be in, con in partnership with demons. If you have a church and is busy promoting yoga in its weekly stuff, it's demonic. Do you know T.D. Jakes' church, his wife, went to a yoga session in his church. This stuff is deception. This stuff is demonic. This stuff is of the devil. It's always been of the devil. Yoga is of the devil. It opens yourself to the kundalini spirit, as do these new age charismatics. This is of Satan. You cannot eat at the table of the Lord Christian and the table of devils, lest we provoke the Lord to jealousy. You cannot feast at the table of the Lord, this word of God, and then go sit with these charismatic ministries that deny the father and son relationship, that deny Jesus Christ, that deny the Bible, that deny the gospel, you cannot sit with them. You do not sit with people who are in partner with demons and demon spirits. And that even goes with people that are in false religion. The sacrifice of the pagan are offered to devils. Muslims offer their sacrifices to devils. Hindus offer their sacrifices to devils. They are demonic according to the word of God. They are false teachers. All other religions except for born again Christianity is the, is the truth. This ecumenism of Mr. James White beyond me sitting over there with, with, with his Muslim we'll deal with that some other time. Calling a Muslim who is an antichrist who denies the father and son relationship, his brother and his mentor. I've never heard any born again evangelical fundamentalist, not in the past or the present, except these modern apostate uh, neo Calvinists saying, Oh, this man's my brother. He's my friend. I've learned a lot from him. This stuff is not of God, including John Piper. This stuff is not of God. We have to bring the plumb line of God's word with regards to these issues. Now, Father, I've said some very, very heavy things about false teachers. I pray that you'll minister to the people that hear it. Lord Jesus, we love you for what you have done. We thank you for your sacrifice, Lord Jesus. We thank you that we are saved by grace through faith alone. We thank you for your word. I pray that the word will find an abiding place in these people's lives, whoever watches it. If it's one person, if it's two people, if it's five people, I pray your blessing, Father God. I pray that you anoint this word, Father God, and you bring it home to the people, Father God, as ever how foolishly I have tried to do it. And we bless you and we honor you, Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you.